We humans need to stop emitting carbon. So why are so many countries shutting down their biggest source of carbon-free energy? Welcome to Decouple Studios, where we explore the technology and politics that can help us decouple human flourishing from environmental destruction. Let's get started. The International Panel on Climate Change, the galaxy's foremost authority on the warming being felt on the planet Earth, re-emerged this summer. Every five to seven years, this group of experts from around the globe publishes a new science non-fiction trilogy called An Assessment Report. They come in three chapters, released a few months apart, each one corresponding to a different working group of the IPCC. Working Group 1 handles the details of our climate system and what that means for the present and future warming going on on the planet. Working Group 2 handles the expected impacts of the warming and how to adapt to them. It is by my hand you will rise from the ashes of this world! Working Group 3 handles the mitigation, how to stop, or at least slow, the warming. Captain, I don't know what's happening, but the reaction is stabilizing on its own. On screen. The ecosystem has been restored to its natural state. So Working Group 1 just released its contribution to assessment report number 6. Basically confirming what it said in assessment reports 1 through 5, that humans burning things is causing a rapid heating of the planet. What do you think? The closest one to you? Let's do that one. <laughs> Meaning we need to stop getting our energy from combustion. Now. And if that's the goal, then a tragic fact is that much of the environmental movement has been working against us. Take New York. Nothing good has ever come out of New York. Imagine if one morning every single solar panel and wind turbine in all of New York State just disappeared offline. Well, something very similar happened on May 1st, 2021, when an equivalent amount of carbon-free energy was taken off the grid. That's because New York State shut down the last remaining reactor at the Indian Point nuclear power plant. I'm proud to announce that Indian Point will close in four years, 14 years ahead of schedule. The lost electricity wasn't replaced by windmills or solar panels. It was replaced by two new gas power plants. More burning stuff. These graphs show the electricity mix of New York City before and after the shutdown of Indian Point. From 60% fossil fuels to 96% fossil fuels. Beyond the natural gas companies that are making serious bank from these decisions, the New York State government was also lobbied by some of the largest environmental NGOs, including the NRDC, which celebrated the closure as part of a quote, pushback on fossil fuels and to move New York forward on hashtag clean energy. Are there no rules on bullshit mountain? <laughs> An environmental group applauding the burning of more gas is like Sammy the sea lion clapping for overfishing. Sammy, Sammy, you love fish. On the other hand, I understand it can be a little weird to hear somebody who claims to care about people and the environment defending nuclear energy. What about Chernobyl? What about the waste? And we'll get to those questions in future episodes. But for now, just know that there's lots of respected environmentalists defending nuclear energy, including James Hansen, the NASA scientist famous for putting climate change on the map in the first place back in the 1980s. There's no way to phase off all fossil fuels within a few decades without the help of nuclear power. Remember working group three of the IPCC, the ones tasked with mitigating climate change? Well, in 2018, they published a report providing four possible pathways for us to keep global warming to 1.5 degrees. Three of the four pathways call for new nuclear plants, and all four of them call for keeping the existing ones online. Yet in many countries, plants with perfect safety records are scheduled to be prematurely shut down and replaced with fossil fuels. We've been told not to worry because solar and wind are on the way, but that's just not what's been happening. Take a look at Germany, the world's leader in investments in renewable energy. Over the past 20 years, Germany has invested a world leading $500 billion in renewable energy. Yet, because of the limitations of wind and solar, Germany has also built dozens of new gas-fired power plants. And last year, it even brought online a new coal plant, the dirtiest energy of all. Why? Because it's shutting down its nuclear plants, which are carbon-free. 
despite all their investments, their electrical grid is still emitting more than seven times more CO2 than nuclear-powered neighbors like France and Sweden. And just next door in Belgium, the Green Party is forcing close two nuclear plants that provide 50% of the country's power also to be replaced with gas burning plants. Meanwhile, in California, Silicon Valley is building new diesel powered generators to power its data centers in the case of future blackouts caused by the instability of renewable energy. And they're about to prematurely shut down the Diablo Canyon nuclear plant. When I was growing up in the Canadian province of Ontario, we would regularly have smog days where we were told not to go outside and do anything. Well, we don't have those anymore. Because in the early 2000s, Ontario phased out more fossil fuel electricity than anywhere else in North America. How? It was by replacing its coal-fired power plants with six nuclear reactors. But fast forward to today, and Ontario is about to undo much of that progress by shutting down prematurely its Pickering generating station and replacing it with wah, wah, more burning of gas. We are seeing the same sloppy pattern happening all over the world. Large environmental organizations and gas companies teaming up to shut down carbon-free nuclear plants. If all the reactors currently threatened with premature closure do in fact get shut down, the result will be an additional 250 million tons of CO2 pumped into the atmosphere per year moving forward. That's the equivalent of 50 million combustion engine cars. The challenge is that with energy, there's no free lunch. All energy involves costs, and all energy involves choices. It's just that some choices make more sense than others. And while shutting down nuclear plants might seem like the responsible thing to do, in reality it means lighting up epic amounts of fossil fuels in the middle of a climate crisis. And that's a proposition worth pissing on. Thanks for watching this first episode of Decouple Studios, the newest member of the growing Decouple Media ecosystem centered around the podcast, which I host. We have a lot more great content to come, so please do hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, or requests, please leave them below in the comments section or send us an email. We read them all. Bye for now.